And to bring us more perspective on this story, I am now joined in by Dr. Mukund Rao, former ISRO scientist who joins me from Bangalore. Let's, let me quickly go across to uh, Mr. Rao. Mr. Rao, what to expect from Chandrayaan 2? You know, Chandrayaan 2 is uh, the mission which is a precursor to the Chandrayaan 1. Mm. The biggest uh, achievement that will be achieved through the Chandrayaan 2 is the fact that you are not just orbiting the moon like in Chandrayaan 1, mm. but you are going to land on the moon. You are going to land a, a, a craft on the moon mm. and then there is a rover which will move around the moon mm. surface. So, so, so the biggest difference and the biggest achievement will be an Indian object would have landed on the moon mm an Indian object would have moved around the moon and an Indian object would have taken some data of the moon which, which would happen for the first time as far as India is concerned. Right, right. Doctor, also how possible is it to get helium from moon? What's the excitement all about? Actually, I would look at it from two points of view. One is the fact that there is helium-3 isotopes on the moon is a scientifically known fact. It has been known from the early 70s when the Apollo astronauts actually found helium-3 existence on the moon. Uh, but uh, most of the nations of the world like the United States and the Europeans are still looking at how to get that information and get that helium-3 and how it can be used for humanity. But technically, yes, it is possible to generate uh, non-radioactive uh, sort of energy and uh, outputs from helium-3. Technically, chemically, it is possible. But whether you can do it from the helium that exists on the moon is, is, is something that scientists are still grappling. It has to be explored, it has to be understood and so on. Right. Also, what is the global sentiment on helium being sourced from moon? Doctor, you must tell us more about that. No, I think uh, uh, it is both, I would say. The, 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 the skepticism is in the fact that, uh, okay, let's go back to the fact. The, the scientific fact that there is helium is not questioned. It's well accepted, it's well documented also on the whole thing. The skepticism comes when people say it can be done now or in a few years and it can be done to do mass generation of uh, power or electricity and so on. But uh, positivity is that it can happen one day. So, so the positivity is that uh, maybe it won't happen now. Uh, so there is skeptics, skepticism for that. But maybe 20 years down the line, 25 years down the line, or maybe 50 years down the line, it can certainly happen because the, the chemistry allows for doing that. It is only the management and the, the, the physical process that one has to understand and set up the, uh, the engineering processes to do that. So does India also have an equal shot at getting the helium? That's true. Like in a, it's like in a running race. Mm. If you are first, if you are second, you are third, you are recognized. Mm. But if you are coming 25th in the running race, nobody knows you. Mm. Same way here, if India has to be a part of that community of the future world mm. where it starts dictating and it starts participating, it starts evolving the rules and the regulations on the whole thing, it better go to the moon. Mm. And uh, I think it's doing the right thing by Chandrayaan too. And uh, it's a small step today, but steps have to be taken. And the fact that India has made the beginning is, is the most positive thing. And that's the, I think that's the sentiment that Chairman of ISRO said, yeah. that you know he would not like to be left behind. Yeah. And he would like to be there and the whole thing. So that's the whole thing. So uh, if you have to be in that arena, you better jump in. And I think that's the right path to take. Right. Thank you so much, Dr. Rao, for speaking to us here on Vion.